Or did they drop the ball now? Are they, are they just now making some rapid changes? Now, here's a theory. We talked on AMC Movie Talk the other day that uh, one of the things that they could do, there was a rumor going around that they were going to shoot Justice League back-to-back -back with Man of Steel 2. So shoot Man of Steel 2 and then shoot Justice League. And I said at the time on AMC Movie Talk, I said, I don't think that's going to happen because it takes you a while to be ready to shoot something like that. And there's no indication that they've been prepping for that to shoot two major films back to back. So I just couldn't see any reality um, where they were going to shoot Justice League back to back with Man of Steel 2. But here we are today on Saturday, January the 18th. And now they've pushed Man of Steel 2 back almost a full year. So, there is a theory running around out there that, hey, now that uh, we've got this theory going on, now, now that it's been pushed back nearly a year, maybe now they'll have time to prep a Justice League movie and shoot it back-to-back -back with Man of Steel 2. Uh, that, is, that is a working... <coughs> feasible theory. Um, and, and I've always said that if you know you're doing a, a, a set of movies, shoot them back to back. It just makes sense because then you know everybody's schedule. It costs a lot less money to do it when you can just shoot it back to back. It just makes sense. And then you don't have to wait the fans wait two or three years in between movies. You can release one and then release one the very next year. Makes sense. But here's the problem. If that's the case, then that means that Warner Brothers and DC lacked any foresight to think that this was a possibility six months ago. Why, why wasn't this a part of your planning six months ago? You know, one of the things that Warner Brothers and DC has been accused of a lot over the past couple of years with their DC properties is the fact that they have no faith in it and they have no foresight with it. That they've never put serious effort into their long-term planning with their properties, that they've never shown faith in their properties, and that they've executed poorly with their properties. And, and I think that's unfair, uh, accusing DC and Warner Brothers of being executing poorly. Uh, I think, yeah, the last Green Lantern movie wasn't all that great, but look at, the, look at the Dark Knight movies Warner Brothers gave us. I didn't like The Dark Knight Rises, but overall as a trilogy, that is a great set of movies. So I think it's unfair for people to constantly point at Warner Brothers and say they always drop the ball with their DC movies because they don't. Sometimes they do, but they, they've proven to give us some really good movies too. And I think Man of Steel was awesome. But they, it has been fair to accuse them that they've lacked foresight in their planning with their DC, that they've never had a long-term plan with their DC properties, and that they've shown a lack of faith in their DC properties. I th and I think those criticisms are very fair. So if the reason that they have delayed Man of Steel to Batman versus Superman after promising the fans they were going to give it to us in this mega 2015 year, if the reason they're doing that is because now they've decided to do Justice League back-to-back -back with Man of Steel 2, then once again, it shows that Warner Brothers has no foresight. Why didn't you know that six months ago? When you're sitting there making your plans and making all your big grandstanding Comic-Con announcements about your big movie, why hadn't you thought of that six months ago? And, and, and now it makes me think that if you hadn't had this in your plan six months ago, now you're jumping the gun. Now you're last second, hey, oh, wait a minute. I know we're getting ready to shoot Man of Steel 2, but uh, uh, wait a minute. What if we shoot Justice League back to back? Yeah, yeah, stop everything. Let's do that now. That shows me lack of foresight. That shows me lack of planning. Um, and either way you cut this, there's no way to look at this in a way that Warner Brothers looks good. Either you dropped the ball six months ago and you showed incompetence then and you messed everything up then and now you're just trying to correct all your mistakes or you're dropping the ball now by thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, now let's do a Justice League. Yeah, now let's do it. Change everything. Put the brakes on. I know we told the fans the movie's coming in 2015, but put the brakes on. Now we'll do Justice League. You're not giving it thought. You're not planning it out appropriately. You're not planning it out right. You're just kind of, it feels to me, it feels to me 
that Warner Brothers is just being very reactionary instead of what Marvel has traditionally done, which has had a huge long-term plan. They're already planning. Marvel's already planning their 2018 films. Their 2018 films are already in the planning stages for. They had Marvel, they had Avengers in, on the drawing board for years before it ever happened. They laid everything out, and when they knew they had everything, all their blueprints right, then they went into action. Warner Brothers, with their DC properties, it's felt very reactionary. No long-term planning, no foresight, no confidence. And it feels like they're just kind of playing it as they go. They're playing it by ear. Just, oh, what should we do now? What should we do now? What should we do now? Instead of having the confidence six months ago to say we want to do Man of Steel 2, we've got our story outline, and then we want to do Justice League and League into that. Let's do back-to-back and start scripting that out now too, and blah, blah, blah. Instead of that, we get a lot of reactionary crap. Um, and so, look, and we should also keep this in mind too. We don't know what's going on at Warner Brothers. We don't know. We're speculating. I'm speculating. But that's my job, right? I, <clears throat> I can look at the facts in front of me and then try to speculate as to what could be the cause for all this. Um, and it could be something completely different. We have to keep in mind, <coughs> pardon me, guys, that... There might be another element at play here at Warner Brothers that none of us are aware of. I doubt it, but that is a possibility, and we do have to keep that in mind. But on the surface, this is just a mess. It's just a mess, no matter which way you cut it. And at the end of the day, maybe they did drop the ball six months ago, and they screwed everything up six months ago, and now they're just trying to do damage control. Well, if that's the case, and at the end of the day, it's a good thing they're doing damage control then it's a good thing they're bumping it 10 months or a year. But it still means that you really dropped the ball and screwed everything up six months ago. And now you're left with this mess that they have to clean up. Like I said, I just don't see any way to look at this entire Man of Steel 2 being delayed thing in a positive light. There, there's no way to look at this positively. Uh, it's unfortunate, but... The end result may still be that we get a great Batman versus Superman movie. Yes, they've dropped the ball. Yes, everything is screwed up. Yes, they've shown lack of foresight. Yes, they've shown lack of confidence. Yes, they show that they've been reactionary instead of proactive. They've been reactive instead of proactive. Yes, yes, yes. All that is true. But the end result may still be that they give us a great movie. And that, that may very well be the case. I still think there's a very good possibility. I still have a lot of faith in Warner Brothers that we're going to get a great Batman versus Superman movie. I think we're going to get a great Man of Steel 2. That eventually we're going to get a great Justice League. I believe in them. And I believe all that can happen. But that doesn't change the fact that right now, the way they've handled everything up until this point, the way they're, they're handling this now, the way they've been reactionary instead of, you know, reactive instead of proactive, no long-term sight, no whatever. It, it's still a mess now. And maybe now they're just scrambling to, to clean up their mess and try to make it right, whatever. Uh, bottom line is, everything is a mess, but we could very well, and I still believe, we're going to get great movies. Um, so <coughs> that's just the way... Um, I looked at it, but the, the but the question that comes up for us fans is going to be now. Then what has changed? You know, why two weeks ago on Jimmy Kimmel, or one week ago on Ch Jimmy Kimmel, why was Amy Adams on Jimmy Kimmel saying, "Yeah, our script is done. It's great. We start shooting really soon. Yay!" And now one or two weeks later. We're moving it almost a year. What has been the significant change between then and now? There's a couple of options, a couple of we, we've already mentioned. Number one, they've decided to do a Justice League movie and do it back to back with Man of Steel 2, in which case they've needed more time <clears throat> being reactive instead of proactive. Uh, they've realized that their script is garbage and they really do need to do. Now, we all know that they brought in Ben Affleck's boy. They brought in Ben Affleck's screenwriter from Argo, who won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay. 
they brought him in to clean up the script. Maybe they've realized, you know what, this script is a bigger mess than we thought and it needs much more work than we thought and we got to start this thing over and we need to go. That's a possible explanation, but it just means you've really screwed things up in the past six months already. If, you're, if your story outline wasn't ready to go at Comic-Con, then why get up at Comic-Con and tell us that this is what's happening? Uh, so that's an option. They need to completely rework the script. They want to do Justice League back-to-back. Another option is they want to do some recasting, but I still don't see why recasting would necessitate a 10-month delay. Uh, <clears throat> obviously, something significant happened. The only question is, what was the significant thing? It's either the Justice League back-to-back, it's either our script was a total mess, uh, but once again, we're, we're always we're left with nothing but a mess. Either way, it's still a mess. And now it's time for us to reset our brains, get 2015 as far as, you know, Man of Steel and Batman goes out of our head and just start looking forward to 2016. And despite everything I've said about how badly this has been botched, about how much incompetence and how much dropping the ball and a big mess that this all is, despite all of that, I'm still looking forward to Batman versus Superman, kids. I am. As long as you don't put Robin in it. <laughs> As long as you don't put Robin, as long as you still don't put Robin in it, I'm not going to open up that whole hornet's nest again. But I'm still looking forward to Batman versus Superman. I still have faith in Zack Snyder. I have loads of faith in Ben Affleck. Warner Brothers gives us great films outside of their DC properties, but even inside their DC properties, they gave us Man of Steel, which I thought kicked ass, and they gave us the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, I didn't like the Dark Knight Rises, but but overall, the trilogy is quite solid. I'm looking forward to Batman versus Superman. Doesn't matter if it's coming out in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, whatever. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm going to be the first one in line to go see it. Uh, no matter what type of mess and how disgusting everything looks in advance, I'm still going to be there. I'm going to be the first in line and I'm going to look forward to it. And I know a lot of you guys feel the same way uh, as I do.